Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, let's thank God that it's Friday. Another week that's gone past. Um, I'm actually going to look into the Divine Feminine's energy collectively and the Divine Masculine's energy. <clears throat> As a collective, we're going to use the Rider Waite Tarot. We're going to tap into the Divine Feminine's energy first. I feel like this could be a weekend reading, but let's see what comes out um, of the cards. Let's see what comes out of the cards. Okay. Divine Feminine. We've got the Page of Cups. These are good cups. These are good cups. They're really good cups. There's 11 cups on the table. What comes out of the cards? 11 cups. Let's carry on going. This is a nice continuous uh, story here. Well, we hit the we hit the green green grass of home with the six of cups here. These are all really beautiful cards. How many cups we got on the table? Seventeen. feel like I'm at the tables, like at, at a casino, and never have I ever, ever, ever been to a casino. So I don't really know what I'm doing, but you know when they kind of say, give me one more card? No, and you're kind of like, well, don't you think this is a good, like, spread that you've got here? It's like, no, just give me one more. Okay. Five of Swords. Okay. Bottom of the deck is the Divine Feminine. You're staying out of it. Okay, so um, we like to say that this feminine is kind of like in a circle of swords, but look closely. It's actually a circle because I feel like the swords are uh, actually behind her, like it's a wall. Okay, and it's blocking out the dark, um, I actually want to call it a tower, the dark tower here. Now the feminine is blindfolded, she is, uh, she's not handcuffed, she's bound. And she's following the stream here. Okay, it's like she's feeling her way. Look how her toes pointed here. Now it's also pointing to the sand, which I do need to pay attention to because I felt like it was continuous with the sand and then okay I felt like the water was coming into the land and then now we're on land and then what's happened here because really this would have been a nice reading and then come out the five of swords and this is the energy of you having to surrender to this but I'm not feeling it's you, Divine Feminine. I'm feeling it's the Divine Masculine's energy. That's why I kind of chuckled when that came out. It was like, okay, we've got a, a masculine on the table who's in love. And it's a real soppy love, okay? This Feminine, you're not actually aware of this. And we're going to find out some more. Actually, let me just put this on the end here. Let me move these up. I want to get some more cards. Oh, I'm a bit shaky. We will go over these cards. Um, what's this? King of Cups. Come here. Okay. I'm feeling the age of did we have, um, how many cups did we, got? did we get? Did we got 18? We have the King of Cups here. So we've got 18 cups and I'm feeling as if this masculine feels like it's the first time he's ever been in love. So feeling as if you're 18, okay? Adult. You're an adult now. Here's your Ten of Cups. Mr and Mrs. A couple of little kids here. Everyone's happy. And then we have memories of love. 
returning to someone from the past and she's got an oven glove on here so um, something's fresh out of the oven okay now I'm taken to like a baker's dozen which you, you would have 13 that's today's date isn't it do we make mention are you superstitious let's hope not okay well it's Friday the 13th today <laughs> A baker's dozen. Why do they cook 13 loaves instead of 12? Because they need the loaf to try themselves to test. Otherwise they won't be able to test what the batch is like. So, 13 loaves of bread in a baker's dozen. We've got 18 cups on the table. Where are we going with this? I don't know. Oh, we was here with our oven glove. Okay, so this loaf's matured. And this energy of having like a loaf to try, um, to see if the batch is all right. Wow. Look, we're going to have to look into this a bit more. Divine Feminine. I was actually doing your reading, but uh, it seems like the, the masculines have taken over. Why? Because they want to know it all. The King of Swords energy. So that can come up here because all we've got is cups and swords on the table. The King of Swords, Mr. Know-It-All. Okay, he knows it all. A bit feminine here, you don't really know too much about what's going on. It's undercover. I feel like this masculine wants to know all that there is about love. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. Well, we've got a, a batch of cards that have come out. We've got Mrs. Encouragement. Okay, the Divine Feminine's energy. You're giving him courage. You are encouraging him. Okay, happily ever after. Very nice. Ten of Cups is on the table again. So, I believe you're showing this, Masculine. You might not be aware of it. What love is. Mr. Dependable. Oh, I like this. These are really good cards. If we take the, the Ten of Cups... And then we have Mrs. Encouragement, which is the Divine Feminine in the Queen of Pentacles. Most definitely the wife energy. Mr. Dependable. <laughs> what is he? Dependable. It's taken to like Mr. Incredible. Okay. The Incredibles. Mr. Dependable. That's what this family unit feels like. It's like uh, this unit is incredible. But I don't feel like this has been achieved yet. There's a surrender to this love. Returning to um, what you may once upon a time considered to have been your outcome. That's what I feel. And I feel like maybe that wasn't the outcome. As of yet, Mr. Dependable is on the table. The King of Pentacles. And then we've got Sex on Legs. Okay. Why did the sex part come in then? <laughs> Wants to know it all. When it comes to love, sex. Are we going to throw romance in now? Bottom of the deck, tradition. This is definitely someone who's wanting a true love connection. Okay, and having a look about... Having a look about... Hmm. I feel like this masculine is maybe taking a look around him. He's actually having a look um, at the contrast. So how others live. What's their definition of a happily ever after? Uh, being a Mr and Mrs. What does that um, comprise of? Is that the right way? Com comprise? <laughs> We've got pies. Anyone for a meat pie? Okay. Tradition. What does true love comprise of? Is that the right word? It just doesn't sound right. Okay, let's go to um, the orange cards. <laughs> My little orange cards. Let's see what the message are. Messages are...
You make me feel safe, secure and strong. How beautiful is that to be told? I feel you make this masculine feel safe, secure and strong. I mean, you're not aware of it yet. Um, he knows it. The money tree. Hmm. Endless possibilities is coming through um, about you being an incredible team here. <laughs> Even the sex is good. <laughs> That's what we're coming from. The money tree. I feel like the masculine seeing um, your abundance your abundance to find feminine. I'll give it all up for you. Wow. Okay. So he hasn't given it all up yet, but he he will. He's going to give it all up for you. What's he giving up? I, I feel like this old way of being. Okay. It's scared of being caught. That's interesting. That's why you're not aware, Divine Feminine. This masculine scared of being caught of what? What's he been doing? Scared of being caught. Oh, do you know what was coming through then? Was actually catching something. Like maybe a virus or something like that. He's scared of being caught. I feel like what's been going on in, in the world maybe has uh, made this masculine really reflect on um, the rest of his life. Shark bait. Hmm. So I do feel as if he's in the in the middle of something. He's in the middle of something. He's in the middle of something. Um, straight at you. Abracadabra in reverse. And I'm ready to face this now. Okay. I actually feel this masculine might have had a scare. Okay. And he might be scared of actually you um, catching something. So he might have been bitten by a shark. Straight at you, that's what I felt the energy was of actually protecting you because you're protected from, you're guarded, Divine Feminine, from these towers in the background. Abracadabra, which is magic, the magician in reverse. The magician in reverse can be a very manipulative, toxic energy here. And then I'm ready to face this now. <clears throat> so I feel like once this is all cleared, whatever needs to be cleared, uh, this masculine is going to be facing you. Okay, I'm going to put all them over there. I'll give it all up for you, yes I would. Something got me started. Bottom of the deck, I'm taking this very seriously, I see that you are. So if um, by chance this masculine has been like infected with something he's taking it really seriously there's no way in this world he wants to even put you at risk so it feels like that might be why he has been uh absent i'm taking this very seriously okay dot the i's cross the t's well i was going to go to the psychic tarot so let's carry on I'm really going to simply read now. You've got that look again, the one I hoped I had when I was a when I was a what? A boy? A lad? I don't know. <laughs> Your face is just beaming. I'm feeling as if this masculine is feeling a lot better. Okay, I feel like he's been concerned about his health, his money, his life. He's had a wake-up call. If he was scared of being caught, he was fearing maybe catching something, I feel as if, uh, well, he may have attracted that by putting any kind of focus on that virus. Anyway, we have emotional withdrawal. So this masculine's in the void. The Eight of Cups. When you come out of the Eight of Cups, you are on your way to the Ten of Cups after you found yourself. Well, we've got the Page of Love the page of love, okay. The page of love and the king of love here. 
So um, he's ready for the Ten of Cups to return to that. Once he comes out of this emotional withdrawal, let's read this uh, card. And I feel like um, he's trying to do things, play by the rules. So if he's meant to uh, self-isolate, quarantine, then that's what he's doing. He has uh, withdrawn himself here. Okay, because he knows uh, that, uh, well, he's contagious. <laughs> Listen, it's just this masculine zone mindset here. It's not what I said. Well, it did come out of my mouth, but... This card represents moving away or withdrawing from a current situation in your life, whether it's an old love, a relationship, or leaving behind what was once familiar in search of new horizons, and in brackets it says, all beginnings. And that's what this masculine is searching for, is a new beginning. On a physical level, it's easy to get caught up. Here we are, we're going to get caught. On a physical level, it's easy to get caught up in the materialistic world, but it's just as important to retreat from the outside world, to enable you to pause, reflect and heal. Schedule some alone time so you can commune with your soul, and give the power of spirit the opportunity to restore your energy level, giving you the vitality to move forward in a positive direction. The number eight represents infinity, passion, control and power. This is your time. Use this opportunity to tap into your heart and soul in order to find the courage and strength to continue your journey into that wonderful, undiscovered territory. Next is the Nine of Cups, Fulfillment of Wishes. Let's find out what else is going on. Apart from we might have the Lurgy. <clears throat> Light. Just the most positive card in the deck. The Sun card. Okay. So I feel like we've shined, we've shined, we've shone. <laughs> we've uh, let it shine. Uh, We've been shining light and love on this situation here. So this situation will be healed. Okay. So we have light. That's why this feminine is not focusing at all on dark towers. Okay. Let's look at the light card. The sun card. Card number 19. This card reassures you that this is your time to be in the light. That's you, Divine Feminine. This is your time to be in the light. No matter what's happening around you, prosperity and bliss are promised. The qualities of this brilliant card are pleasure, happiness, contentment, growth, success, joy and illumination. The light always brings forth new birth, a constant renewal of life. This is one of the best if not the most positive cards in the deck, and it's yours, Divine Feminine. See where positivity will get you? It will get you everywhere. Okay, this is now your moment to shine. The radiance from within will be there for all to see, as people become attracted to the rays of your spiritual light, and by being compassionate, generous, inspiring, and a leader, many will benefit as they feel the warmth emanating from you. By discerning, by discerning, be discerning, but also be open to whatever or whomever you're attracting, for your rays reach far and wide. The light card reminds you that because of its power, nothing remains in the dark. Through its illumination, truths and certain paths before you begin to emerge and can be surely seen. Using the energy of positive thoughts, and continually thinking about the happiest and most joyful of memories. Look at this, the most happiest, the most joyful of memories. This is the card of memories. So using the energy of positive thoughts and continually thinking about the happiest and most joyful of memories will light the path before you even more brightly and attract exactly what you're emanating. Keep on shining. So even though you may not be aware of it, your light your light is reaching far and wide. Okay. 
We'll look at the enchanted map. <clears throat> Divine message. We get a card for you first. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look and see where you are on the enchanted map today. Something's got me started. Mm -hmm. You're in Ghost Lens 17. So I'm picking up this age of 18 or 18 cups. We've had 19 here. We've got 17. Nearly there. At the 18 mark, I'm not sure what that stands for, the 18. Well, anyway, uh, if it's a date, then it's uh, five days' time. Card number 17. You can learn from the past and imagine a beautiful future, but you must live in the here and now. Whenever you set your sights too far ahead, you run the risk of losing your footing, for rarely do the present and future match up exactly on the enchanted map that is your life story. The future has no substance right now. It is a place that has no grounding as of yet. You can't live there, yet you can take measured steps towards a goal or dream. These steps are important now. The same goes for nostalgia. You can look into the past wistfully and remember beautiful moments or revisit lessons learned. However, you can't live there, nor can you go back and change what was. Yesterday is gone forever. <coughs> live fully in the present. The now is the most powerful place to put your, intent, your attention so the now is the most powerful place to put your attention. Its magic reaches out in every direction, further than the heart and soul can see. Okay, so Mr. Know It All, I feel like you're focusing on the now. Well, let's hope so, because uh, doing a review of the past, maybe having a look at your life since you was 18, you've got this new beginning coming on. Um, it's coming on, it's coming on. It's there. Divine Feminine. Let's get you a card. I'll put the book all the way over there. Let's have a look and see where the Divine Feminine is on the Enchanted Map. Divine Feminine, I'm going to get you a Divine Feminine Oracle card as well. Spirit of Place. That's where you are, Divine Feminine. Interesting enough that it is the Emperor's number, the Divine Masculine. It's card number four. This is where you are, the spirit of place. Authenticity is the essence of power. Our ancient ancestors believed that every place has a spirit looking after it or embodying it. Just as we have a soul, the plants, trees, birds, mountains and rivers have their own essences. And I believe that, well, if you're anything like me, then uh, if you're anything like me, you're tapping really into the nature, the birds. We've been talking about mountains. Okay. So just as we have a soul, the plants, trees, birds, mountains and rivers have their own essences. When the spirit of place arrives in your reading, it says that the answer to your query is in the, that's interesting, the answer to your query is in the overarching theme of your circumstances. Is your question about a struggle? The answer is to relax and let go of your need to control the situation, which is very much this energy here. Where are you? I can hear someone out there saying, where are you? <clears throat> Okay. Once you find... Oh, I think it was my daughter calling the cat. Where are you? It sounded like a man's voice outside. Well, not really. A woman's voice, but quite masculine. <laughs> well, the answer is to relax and let go of your need to control the situation. If your inquiry relates to finding love, then embody love 
rather than long for it. Once you find the essential truth that underlies your question and then name it, you'll discover the answer you've been seeking. Your greatest power is your authenticity. Okay. So once you find the essential truth that underlies your question and then name it, you'll discover the answer you've been seeking. Your greatest power is your authenticity. Something's got me started. You know that I will love you. Baby, since we parted. Let's go to the Divine Feminine Oracle cards. Okay, Divine Feminines, let's have a look and see what card wants to come out of the Oracle deck for you. What energy is the Divine Feminine sitting in? Uh, Queen Esther, the Morning Star. I felt like there was two cards there, but there's not. There's just a one. My ego is in service of my soul, and I trust my soul's Divine Guidance. What an awesome uh, message. Queen Esther. Page number 146. Who she is. Esther represents the powerful combination of feminine intuition and divine timing. Esther was a he Hebrew orphan born with the name Hadasha, raised by her cousin Mordecia. Mordecai, she lived with the Jewish community in exile in Persia during the 5th century BCE. Mordecai became aware of a plot against the Jewish people created by the king's chief minister, Haman. Using her brilliance and her intuition, Esther came up with a plan to save her cousin and her people. Her beauty had caught the attention of the king. So when his current wife, Vashti refused to come to him when called. Esther seized the moment and the king chose her to be his wife. Then Esther didn't wait for the king to call her. She prepared a large banquet and then called for him. Once he was fully in love with her, she revealed that she was a Jew and that Haman had plotted to kill her people. The book of Esther in the Tanakh, or the Hebrew scriptures, is known as the scroll, or the Megala, and it is read twice out loud, once in the morning and in the evening, during the festival of Purim, to celebrate the memory of Esther's brave actions. Her name is derived from the word meaning bright star, or morning and evening star. This is the name she grew into when she courageously trusted her intuition and used its divine timing to save herself and her people. When your soul selects her card, the ego has a timetable that the soul couldn't care less about. When we are feeling stressed or threatened in some way, fear can be exceptionally loud and can inform the ego to work overtime in trying to get something accomplished or to manipulate something to happen. The natural flow of energy that's always at work behind the scenes, the universe's capacity to assist us, then gets blocked. And this is really what the feminine here is, is following. So with the abracadabra coming out, that's like the magician in reverse. So that would be a, a manipulative energy trying to manipulate this situation rather than just surrendering. So when we are in service of love, we are following the dictates of our soul. And when the ego is in service of the soul, divine timing ensues. Esther mastered this art, even under extreme duress. She listened wisely to her soul. 
She became a queen by letting her love for her people inform her feminine intuitive powers. And this is her imperative. Trust that everything is aligning in divine timing. Trust your soul voice. The soul voice meditation. What do I intuitively know will happen in divine timing for me? And the intention, my ego is in service of my soul and I trust my soul's divine timing. Let's um, finish this reading with <clears throat> a message from Rumi. These cards feel a bit heavy. Okay. They're lightening up now. Let's have a message, please. I can see that outside the window there's um, a great big wish. That's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's caught on a cobweb. But there's a great big wish that I can, if I can take a picture of it. Let me see. Let me zoom in. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can show you. Right there, that's a wish. There's my heart chakra, and there's a wish on the other side of the window. I can hear you, I can see you. Have a Coke. Have a Coke. <laughs> it's a wish. The card is Dance of the Divine Feminine. Card number 42. If a tree could move from one place to another, it would not suffer the pain of the sore or the oppressive wounds. If the sun and the moon stood still like the rocks, they could not offer brilliance. How bitter the taste of water would be if the river stopped its flow, remaining still like seawater. When the seawater rises to become a cloud, it loses its bitterness and pours the rain of sweetness. I have given you only a few examples. You can figure out the rest. Break away from the self and enter the kingdom of love. Rumi. How can your feet bear to be still when the music is so lush and inviting? How can you hold yourself back from the tide of love when the horizon looms so vast and exciting? How can you not arch your back and respond with ecstasy to the lover's touch, saying in absolute submission, yes, more? You were made to move and grow, to love and flow. Even mountains change. Surrender the stodgy ways of the mind and become willing to dance to the great orchestrations of love. Oh, the wish has gone now. And because that took me to, I suggested it was a podgy, a stodgy wish that comes through. <laughs> a little one. Okay. So surrender the stodgy ways. This is the surrender card here. Surrender the stodgy ways of the mind and become willing to dance to the great orchestrations of love. You may feel unsettled, beloved, as though the ground beneath you is not so solid. You may touch it to see. Is it moving? Of course. 
it is hurtling through the skies, spinning, tilted on its axis. It's amazing you aren't passed out on the floor in utter dizziness. Yet you stand there, imagining you have a choice of not moving. What funny foolishness. Let us laugh about it together. How can you even imagine it? Only through some misplaced fear. It is such a small craziness, really. You can cast it off, that small crazy fear. Let it return to the Earth Mother, to become fertiliser for the far grander and more exciting insanity of divine love instead. Give up that tiny insanity in favour of the greater craziness of love. You cannot be unmoved by it. The rhythm of life will get you shaking your hips eventually. How could you not become entranced by the gleaming dance floor, shimmering with possibility and invitation? This oracle comes to you with guidance. Your life may feel as though it is being tipped upside down. Perhaps you feel as though the great beloved, in a feisty mood, has grabbed your ankles, is holding you upside down and shaking you wildly until your skirt is over your head. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> until your skirt is over your head or the pockets of your pants become freed of their contents, keys and wallet drop into the floor in disarray. Your hair is messy, your bottom is in the air and your sense of orientation is nowhere to be found. Blood is rushing to your head and goodness knows you just want to be put down to have a moment to come to your senses. So the beloved will give you that gift but don't imagine it will last for too long. The great beloved esteems you capable of so much more than being sure-footed and sensible. You are capable of more whirling and stumbling whilst inspired by the music of the spheres. If you just accept the great inv invitation to dance, there won't be so much roughhousing going on. It won't be needed because your hair will already be in a mess. Your blood will already be pumping and you'll be sweating, laughing, smiling and dancing. The great beloved will be alive in you, which is all that grand seducer ever wanted in the first place, even with all the jokes and horseplay. Disarrayed and disheveled by the Divine Beloved, you are able to break out of a too ordinary world. You will explore the delightful consequences of rocked boats and upset apple carts being swept away by love as you dare to dream bolder and wilder dreams for yourself and the world. There is bigger magic for you to weave this lifetime. Prosthetic priorities inherited from the world are stuff and nonsense. It is the priorities of the heart that matter to you. If you are ever to right yourself, whilst the beloved is tipping you upside down, like a soaring bird in most impressive aerial dynamics. That took me to that crow. Uh, if you've watched that video, I can't remember which video it was. It was one of the star signs. But I watched the crow knock a pigeon off of my aerial from the top of my... Uh, it's on my roof. Um. <laughs> So, like a soaring bird in most impressive aerial dynamics, it will be through establishing right priorities, the priorities of your own heart. So ask your heart what matters most and attend to that. Soon you'll be able to find your orientation even if everything you have once held onto appears to be shimmering and insubstantial a mere dance of light rather than solid ground. This will become so easy for you because your orientation will flow from within, from the heart, and no matter what shifts and changes take place around you, your centre will remain strong, and this is what the Beloved wants for you. Such peace and relief it shall bring to you, but perhaps some shaking about is required first, in case you are reluctant to give up some mainstays, unaware of how much they drain life away from your heart centre. This oracle brings you this message also. There is something you are holding on to, a person, a place, a thing, a belief, a vision, and you need to let it go because it wants to grow. It may grow and change into something utterly different, or it may grow into exactly what you are imagining. Whichever outcome, growth is happening, and you'll find 
you enjoy the way much more, with greater flow and support and less bashing of your head against a proverbial brick wall if you can let it happen. Don't worry if it seems as though your world is coming to an end or you are losing something you once loved. This is just the shaking about of the great beloved to lead you into a deeper, sweeter dance of divine being and becoming. Put your focus into your heart and realise you are more ready than you think. Now shake those hips, stamp those feet, close your eyes and clap your hands. There, that's better already. Wow, what an awesome message. Okay, I feel like I want to leave you with one more message. Well, let's just go to the Mother Mary. What do you mean, let's just go to the Mother Mary? Let's go and see what the Mother Mary wants to say. The bottom of the deck is, I think, Our Lady of Blessings Bestowed. Our Lady of Holy Fire, card number 39. Opened up to it straight away. <clears throat> to live is to burn, to grow and to ignite the heart and soul with passionate devotion to higher purpose. I ask you to honour me even when it seems like what you love is burning away or what you have believed in is, is failing you. I ask you to remain open to me even if you are in shock, denial or feel betrayed or broken. To live with an open heart is for the brave souls that love me and are capable of loving the world. I bring you holy fire it burns through me a spiritual passion and ignites now in you also, my child. You are to receive this fire now and set the heart of the world aflame. When we don't have spiritual passion in our heart, we fall in love with empty substitutes. We might yearn for a fantasy relationship that never quite manifests, or does for a short time before revealing itself to be less than substantial. Or perhaps we yearn for a great job, with a great income, only to find that even if we achieve this, there is still a place in our hearts that is not satisfied by what we have attained. To feel truly connected to our own divine destiny, we have to be willing to allow our hearts to burn for something greater than our own individual needs and wants, it is not comfortable to do this, but it is fulfilling in a way that cannot be attained by any other method. It is not bad to have individual needs and wants, of course. We cannot quench another's thirst if our cup is so broken it cannot sustain nourishing liquid for us, let alone for anyone else. Yet the oracle of Our Lady of Holy Fire speaks to us of a passion for the divine coming into our hearts, which will heal us and empower us to love the world, allowing the Divine Mother to flow through us and assist our world, which is in the midst of rebirth right now. The holy fire in our hearts is what makes us want to grow spiritually. We cannot help but be intrigued by it, feel drawn to it, compelled to work at it, and keep going even when it gets tough or seems downright impossible. It is what makes us want to contribute something helpful to the world, to become empowered and truthful in how we live, to want to live with goodwill and a genuine desire that all beings become happy and free. That holy fire in the heart is what fuels us when we are in dark, challenging times in our lives, when we force ourselves through the strength of our inner will, to reach towards the divine for help, rather than collapsing in defeat 
or drowning in feelings of rejection or abandonment. Our Lady of the Holy Fire is the patron protector of the mystical soul, the soul that yearns to know the divine and connect in a real nourishing and palpable way. That soul wants to know the divine more than it wants to play power games or rule the world. That soul wants to cut through all the nonsense that it knows is not important and experience divine truth. You hold within you this mystical heart, beloved, and Our Lady comes to you with acknowledgement of this and appreciation for your spiritual passion. If you have been feeling that your faith has been wavering or finding it difficult to trust that a situation will work out or doubting yourself, fearing that you are not honouring your inner wisdom in a particular situation, Our Lady comes to you with comfort. She reinforces your spiritual strength now. She reminds you now of the unlimited divine resources you have access to through her grace. She reminds you that to love is to burn in a spiritual fire for the divine and that this fire is in your heart ignited. She reminds you that you are her child, yes, but you are a living divine flame filled with, filled with her power and glory and nothing shall subdue your light or spirit. If you are finding it difficult to relate to this message, you are being asked to loosen your grip on a situation that you are trying to hold on to. Let it burn in the holy fire of the mother and know that what emerges from that situation will be far superior and far more suitable for all concerned. Allowing it to burn means being completely honest, not hiding yourself or your true feelings. It means giving up the doubt and daring to believe that you don't have to be afraid. If you don't feel ready to do this quite yet, that is fine. You will get to that place at the right time and in the right way. Trust her and trust yourself and do the following healing process to assist you no matter where you are in this lesson of Our Lady of the Holy Fire. Okay, let's finish with this healing process and affirmation. A living flame burns, bu burns before you, bright, powerful and intense. You may hear it crackling or feel its heat on your skin, but it will not harm you. Within the flame, the face of a beautiful woman appears with her hands raised in blessings. Through the fire, she speaks to you and she says that she is going to help you find your deepest desires and deepest fulfilment and she asks you to trust her. Place your hands at your heart and if you can trust her, imagine that the fire with her beautiful essence within it is now burning gently in your heart, radiating through your entire body, all the way up and out through the top of your head and all the way down and out through the soles of your feet. You are a living flame filled with holy light. Allow yourself to stay and burn in this sacred fire with her as it cleanses and protects you. When you are ready, finish with this healing affirmation said aloud three times. Our Lady of the Holy Fire, Mother Mary, who loves me unconditionally. Bless me with your powerful, compassionate truth. May my heart burn with that truth and may it set the world free. Our Lady of Holy Fire, Mother Mary, who loves me unconditionally, bless me with the powerful, compassionate truth. May my heart burn with that truth and may it set the world free. Our Lady of the Holy Fire, Mother Mary, who loves me unconditionally. Bless me with your powerful, compassionate truth. May my heart burn with that truth and may it set the world free. So be it. Guys, I will catch up with you soon. Until then, take care. Much love. Bye for now.